You know what we're gonna do today? We are gonna dive into these new Excel features because I know I'm behind on these updates and if you're watching this, you are too. So let's learn together. Let's go over Excel's coolest, newest, most time-saving hacks so you can get on out of your office and go touch some grass. If you guys are new here, what's up? My name is Michelle Bally. You are watching this channel right here that's called Learn with Shopify, where we teach you everything that you need to know as an online entrepreneur. Let's ease into this and start with the fun stuff. The first update is that Excel can capture data from screenshots. Shocked, absolutely shocked and elated that this is a feature. Okay guys, you can use the snipping tool to take screenshots of the data you wanna import. And this is such a handy feature that can save you a ton of time and effort, especially compared to manual data entry. Okay, so here's how we do it, guys. First, of course, you would want to start by taking the screenshot. Use the screenshot tools to capture the specific data you want to import into Excel. So if you have Windows, what you would do is use the built-in snipping tool by pressing the Windows key, Shift and S at the same time, and then you would adjust and select the desired area on your screen. But if you're on a Mac, you would use the screenshot tool. That's just Shift, Command and 4. Then you would import the screenshot data. So go ahead and open your Excel spreadsheet, go to the data tab in the get external data group, click on from clipboard. At that point, Excel analyzes the screenshot. It's gonna to attempt to analyze the structure and format of the data, so it might take a few seconds. Now you have to review what it's giving you. A window will show up basically with Excel's interpretation of the data from that screenshot, but it might not be perfect though, especially if the screenshot contains like complex layouts or overlapping text. So you can review the data and make any necessary corrections within the window. And the nice thing about this is Excel usually highlights areas where it's like unsure, so it will bring it right to your attention. Okay, so you're done editing whatever you need to do. Then you'll go ahead and click insert data. After that, you're good to go. If you want to make sure that you get the best results, use clear and focused screenshots. And also keep an eye out that your screenshot captures only relevant data. I would say simple layouts with well-defined tables and lists are usually easier for Excel to interpret. Complex layouts with lots of clutter and overlapping text or images might just have you in it correcting the data after the import, which is kind of counterintuitive to what we're trying to do here. We're trying to save time. You know what I'm saying? Excel now has searchable dropdowns with data validation. Now you can create a dropdown list that only allows users to select items from a predefined list. This eliminates the issue of duplicate entries. This is such a nice feature to have because it helps ensure that the data is accurate and clean. So let's say for example, you're tallying votes for what products to stock next year for your business, let's just say. Instead of letting your colleagues just like freestyle it, you would have options like pants, dress shirt, sweater. Why? Because imagine if one coworker says sweatshirt, <laughs> the other one's like hoodie, and then one misspells it. Well, it's kind of like a headache to have to tally those votes after, right? Having a dropdown makes it easier to sort and interpret the data later. Here's how to create searchable dropdowns with data validation in Excel. First, prepare your data list. You can either have your data list typed out in a separate range of cells within the same worksheet or another worksheet entirely. Next, select the cell or the cells for the dropdown. Click on the cells or cell where you want the dropdown menu to appear. You can select multiple cells if you want the dropdown functionality to be in all of them. Now it's time to apply the data validation. Okay, so go to the data tab on the ribbon. In the data tools group, click on validation. Set up the validation rule in the dialog box that appears and make sure allow is set to list. So here you have two options. Type the list directly, but you would have to separate each list item with a comma, or you can select a range. Click the collapse button next to the source box and highlight the cells with your data in your worksheet. Now enable in cell dropdown. Check the box next to in cell dropdown if you want the dropdown arrow to appear directly within the cell. This allows for easier searching and selection. Click OK. And now you should have a dropdown menu in your cells. When you click on the dropdown arrow or start typing within the cell, Excel will filter the list based on your input, making it easier to find the specific item you need. You can even type in a new item that isn't on the original list and Excel will add it to the list for future use as long as you make this option available. I feel like this update is pretty cool because if you have a bunch of people working on one document, you can really control what data is input. It helps avoid duplicates of data, plus a user can only select items from the list and duplicates will automatically be removed. It also just makes your life easier and cleaner by only working with a predefined set of options. All right, next feature. The new Python in Excel feature allows you to write Python code directly within your Excel spreadsheets. The benefit here is that you can enjoy the familiar and user-friendly environment of Excel 
Excel with the powerful data analysis capabilities of Python. For example, you can leverage Python libraries like pandas and stats models to perform complex statistical analysis on your data all directly within Excel. With this, you can also do advanced visualizations, you can do sophisticated charts and graphs using matplotlib and Seaborn. Also guys, if you're at this point and you're like, what the heck is going on right now? I'm gonna leave chapters in the description box so that you can just jump straight to the features that are important to you guys because I get that this is a little bit technical, I get it. But where were we? Uh, yes, another benefit of having Python in Excel is that you have a more seamless workflow. So you can clean and manipulate your data in Excel and then use Python for visualizations and more advanced analytics. And no separate Python installation is required. This functionality is available through Microsoft 365 for users in the Insiders program. One thing I wanna say is that Python in Excel feature is still under development and has limitations. So while you may not have the same level of direct control over Excel objects as you would with local Python libraries, you can still use Python and Excel to programmatically manipulate your data through the cloud-based service. Also, because the code runs in the cloud, there can be annoying delays, especially if you're working with complex calculations. This is definitely not ideal for real-time data manipulation, but as this feature does continue to evolve, you can expect to see improvements and potentially new functionalities in the future. So that's something nice to look forward to. But yeah, let's put this in motion and see how this works. So when you use the Python function in Excel, it essentially creates a compressed version of your data set called a data frame. This data frame is processed on an online server. You can't directly see the entire data frame within Excel, but you can get a glimpse of the data through the insert data and preview features. These show the first few and the last few entries of your data frame. By the way, you can assign a name to your data frame and use that name in your Python code to reference the data. This avoids the need to write out the entire data frame definition every time, which is super handy. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to use Python in Excel for a basic data cleansing task. Let's say you have a data set in your Excel sheet with a column that has product names but the data is not clean because some product names have leading or trailing spaces. Some of the entries even have typos or inconsistencies in capitalization. So let's go ahead and clean this data using Python in Excel. First, prepare your data. Make sure your data is formatted as a table in Excel. Do this because this allows for easier interaction with Python. Then choose the column that has the product name that you wanna clean. Now the fun part, access the Python function. Go to the formulas tab and click the Python icon, write your Python code. If you don't have that, you can actually just Google or Gemini a basic Python code snippet for cleaning the product names. And then the last step is you can review and apply the cleaning. So the bummer is that you can't directly paste the clean data back into your spreadsheet. At this stage, you can only copy the output from the Python window and paste it into a separate text editor to review the results. But if you look at it and you're like, okay, this cleaning seems satisfactory, you can manually copy and paste the clean data back into your original column in Excel, and that will replace the unclean data. So obviously there's a learning curve involved if you're not familiar with Python coding, and sometimes if you have a simple task, just a standard Excel formula might be easier in the long run. Other things that you can use Python for though are custom calculations and exploratory data analysis. This is riveting stuff. Overall, Python in Excel lets you use a wider range of data analysis and manipulation techniques, but you're still able to do it in the cozy and familiar home of Excel. Obviously right now this feature has its limitations, but it can be a valuable tool if you're already comfortable with Python. If you guys are finding this video helpful so far, please consider giving this video a like because it's something small that you can do that personally helps me out and this channel out. All right, back to the video. Who's heard about add-ins? They're basically mini programs that extend the capabilities of Excel. They can be created by Microsoft or third-party developers offering a wider range of functionalities to enhance your spreadsheet experience. It's kind of like a cute little app store. There are two main categories of add-ins in Excel. The easiest type is Office add-ins. These are cloud-based add-ins and you can find them and install them on the Microsoft Office store. So to get there, go directly within Excel by going to the insert tab and clicking get add-ins. While you're here, you can search for add-ins by category or specific functionalities. Once installed, the add-in might appear as a button on the ribbon or a separate window pane within Excel. Some popular examples of add-ins are Wikipedia. Yes, Wikipedia, how cool is that? You can search Wikipedia directly from Excel without switching applications. And guys, you can also get a QR code generator. This is great for data encoding or linking to websites. And how about this? You can even get a translator. But text to columns might be my favorite, guys. You can split text
text from a single column into multiple columns. Okay, so on a completely unrelated note, this is a Shopify powered channel that you're watching. So like as a little treat, as a little courtesy, I will leave you guys a link for you in the description box if you're interested in getting a free Shopify trial. All right guys, this has been so fun. I've really loved to hang out with you today and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video. My name is Michelle Valley. You're watching this channel called Learn with Shopify and I will see you guys next week. Peace.